Call New Orleans Amateur Radio Society, two minute technical net. Call New Orleans, two minute technical traders net. These nets meet every Saturday evening at 8 o'clock. Purpose is to exchange technical information between fellow amateur radio operators. Net control this evening is this station, AB40Z. That's Alpha, Bravo, 4, Oscar Zulu. AB40Z, the name of here is Alan. And tonight, for something totally different, we are not taking check ins yet. Uh, seeing as we have a uh, uh, an influx of a lot of hams checking into nets, the uh, net controllers have had trouble keeping up with the uh, with the uh, influx with the uh, quantity of check ins. KN4 AQ, oh, I coaxed him into coming out of uh, retirement to help uh, uh, talk about repeater etiquette, what the repeater does, how the repeater does it, uh, how to check in, how to use it. And I'd like everyone to listen in. So this is a training session. KN4AQ, Gary, you there? AB4OZ, KN4AQ, can you hear me now? Sounding great, Gary. Okay, Gary will be net control while he's uh, doing the training. AB4OZ, go ahead. <laughs> okay, Alan, uh, we're not going to take check-ins, but we will take questions uh, in uh, in a couple of minutes when I'm done with a couple of basic things and then uh, get back to the uh, tech and traders net I guess uh, my name is Gary KN4AQ uh, old timers will remember who I am I was the president of RARS back in the late 90s 98 99 I was also the um, repeater chairman and public information officer things like that my uh, RARS activity has diminished considerably in the uh, past uh, oh I don't know almost decade but um, Still, uh, still a member, still playing around. And uh, back in the late 90s, maybe early 2000s, I used to do a, a thing called the New Ham Net. Uh, it included a lot of information um, for new hams. We had a huge influx of new technicians back then. And let me reset the timer here. <laughs> we were having a huge influx of new technicians throughout the 90s uh, when the uh, FCC initiated the... Uh, no code tech, and uh, a lot of people wanted to uh, figure out how this repeater stuff worked. They were able to get on the repeater, but they didn't know that much about it. And Alan has twisted my arm to uh, to, to revisit doing at least some of that uh, uh, net type activity. <clears throat> so I'm um, going to give that a bit of a try. Uh, specifically, at least up here at the beginning, uh, a couple of uh, points about uh, checking into nets and how to handle net uh, operating procedure because um, I think that's what Alan has been seeing uh, new hams have uh, have some trouble with W four E W six four <laughs> Raleigh so specifically dealing with the net and specifically dealing with the check-ins to the net which I guess uh, people have been having some trouble with um, this is the procedure, and it's pretty simple. Uh, when net control is calling for people to check in, and they'll do that by uh, referring to your call sign suffix. That's the last two or three letters, I guess in a few cases from some extras, the last one letter. <laughs> the last one, two, or three letters of your call sign, those are the letters that come after the number. So, for example... I am KN4AQ, and so my suffix is AQ, and so when the net control is calling for stations to check in with suffixes from alpha to uh, whatever, hotel, that's my turn. And uh, net control will call for those check-ins and then stop transmitting. And at that point, if you qualify for that round of check-ins, push your transmit button and just say net controls call sign, or if you don't know what net controls call sign is, say net control this is, and then let go. And the reason for that <clears throat> is that there could be a bunch of other folks out there in the same call sign, uh, call letter suffix group that have also pushed their buttons <laughs> and are also trying to check in. And you want to see if you're doubling or tripling or quadrupling with any of those. It does happen. It doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. So it would work like this. Let's say Alan was still net control. I would say AB4OZ, this is. 
and I've uh, left plenty of time go. No one else is uh, is starting to come on, so I would say this is Kilo November 4, Alpha, Quebec. And um, that's pretty much it. That's your check-in. Uh, you let go, and you listen to see if net control repeats your call sign back to you. There'll probably be two or three or four other people that are checking into the net at the same time. Uh, it, you may have heard one of them come on before you. You may hear two or three of them come on afterwards, and then net control will repeat the call signs of the people that he or she was able to hear. If they don't repeat your call sign, that means that somebody else was transmitting at the same time you were, both times, first time and second time. That can happen. And they were stronger than you were into the repeater. And so net control never heard your call sign. So you get another chance to give it a try. If they do say your call sign, then you just wait until your turn comes around to be called on the net. If you miss your call sign group and they have moved on, just wait. And at the end, when they finish all the alphas through all the Zulus, net control will uh, call for anyone who wants to uh, check in that they missed, anyone that's uh, checking in late. And so if, uh, if you're... Uh, If you are um, uh, missed your call sign group and you want to check in late, it's the same procedure. Uh, you just uh, check in at that point. And uh, so then when uh, the net is done with whatever business they've got, any traffic, any announcements, any uh, special activities that are uh, bars related, they will uh, call on everybody to make a rag chew. And... That's your chance to talk for 15, 20, 30 seconds, probably not much more than that, about what's going on with your day, what uh, what you're doing in ham radio, anything that you feel like sharing with your fellow club members and, um, and talking about on the net. Um, that's also a point where a lot of brand new hams have a little bit of trouble because they're still a little bit mic shy and they're not sure what to say. But if you are a new ham and you do find yourself a little bit bike shy, it's also your opportunity to kind of get over that and uh, think of something to say, something to talk about. Again, 10, 15 seconds, maybe 30 seconds at most, and uh, your friends in the club will uh, have a chance to hear what you sound like. And that will help you get over being mic shy a little bit, uh, especially if you when you do that maybe three, four, five days in a row. As you can tell, I don't have any problem with being mic shy. What a lot of folks who are checking into the net do if they don't want to talk during their rag chew section, they don't really have um, very much to contribute, or maybe they still got some of that mic shy, and the best they can do is check in, and they're not quite ready to uh, um, make a 15- or 30-second uh, rag chew. When they check in, they will tell the net control that they are in and out, and that would sound more like this. A before a Z, this is Kilo November 4, Alpha Quebec, Gary and Carrie, and I am in and out. That'll let the net control know not to put you in the rotation for a, uh, a rag chew, but don't go away yet. Don't go away mad. Don't let the door hit you on the way out, but don't go away yet because uh, you're not quite done yet. Um, you want to wait, first of all, for net control to uh, tell you that they heard you, that they copied your call sign. And you really should stick around for any of the announcements or net business that comes up next, uh, because th those are things that are information for club members and repeater users that, uh, that somebody wants you to be able to hear. So... If, even if you don't want to be in for a rag chew, even if you don't want to hang in for uh, a, uh, you know, your, your turn to just tell people what's going on, hang in for the net control to acknowledge that you're there, at the very least. Otherwise, you won't know whether they, they actually heard you or not. And, uh, and listen to whatever net business and announcements they've got. And then you can feel free to leave. Um, but hang in that long. So this is KN4AQ. I'm Gary, and uh, this is uh, 
sort of a version of my old uh, New Ham net. I, I, I didn't have time to look up what I might have put, what notes I might have saved from how I do these. So I'm just going to wing it for another couple of items, and then uh, uh, we'll, we'll uh, take some questions. Um, you may notice that I stop talking uh, fairly frequently after I've been going for a minute or two. Um, and normally during a net, nobody's talking this long except maybe when they're making an announcement. And the reason for doing that is the repeater's got a timer. Uh, this is an FCC requirement that any any amateur station that is operated under, under remote control, and the repeater is operated under remote control, there's nobody sitting at the tower over by the highway patrol station at Bayleaf uh, with their finger on the uh, on the switch. So the repeater is operated by remote control by a, a group of control operators. But any repeater that is re uh, operating under, under remote control is required to have a three-minute timer and to not transmit for more than three minutes in a row uh, without automatically shutting off. And uh, the reason for that is if, um, if the control operators, whatever system that they are using to control the repeater, and we've got a variety and we don't talk about what they are because it's a security issue, but if all of the, uh, the systems and redundance and backup systems were to fail, then the, the backup to the backups is that we can just hold a, a signal on the input for three minutes and the repeater will go off the air. We've got to keep holding the signal. As soon as the signal goes away from the input, uh, the repeater comes back on. And you may have heard that happen. Odds are you have when somebody got a little bit too verbose and talked for more than three minutes, and uh, you will hear the repeater announce it at times out. And uh, then when they finally stop, then you'll hear the repeater announce that uh, the timeout has ended. There is a, um, a caveat to that, or <clears throat> there's something else I need to add to that. <clears throat> and that is that um, during drive times, which I think are currently set at uh, 6 until 8 in the morning and uh, 4.30 until 6 in the evening, the repeater timer is reduced from 3 minutes to a minute and a half, 90 seconds. Uh, and you'll also, during that condition, you'll also hear that the repeater has a little courtesy tone. Normally the repeater doesn't have a courtesy tone, but during that time it does have a little beep. And uh, the reason for the shortened uh, timer is to encourage people during drive time when the repeater is generally busier than other times to not yammer for a long time, to not monologue, not tie up the repeater, and let uh, other people get in. So it's sort of a little policeman on the beat, um, just encouraging you not to be uh, so um, loquacious during the drive time. And again, you're reminded of that when you hear the little beep. Uh, the hang time is still pretty short, but it's a little bit longer, and in the middle of it, you do get a little beep. That's the only time the RARS repeater has a, uh, a courtesy tone. And the last thing to mention about that timer is that it resets when the repeater drops. Uh, during drive time, when you hear that little beep, it doesn't reset on the beep. It doesn't reset when you let go of your transmission. It resets when the repeater drops. So if you are fast on the trigger and start transmitting before the repeater drops, and it doesn't take long. I mean, here, this is how long it takes for the repeater to drop. It doesn't take very long. About one second. If you are a little too fast on the trigger and you uh, pick up the repeater before it's dropped, then the timer is still adding up time. And if the person before you talked for a minute and a half, then uh, during normal times you've got a minute and a half left. And during drive time you've got nothing left if the repeater's ready to time out. So uh, it's important to, to wait until the repeater times out. Or, no, the repeater. No, it's important to wait until the repeater drops, and then you get the three minutes back for your uh, for your next transmission. And uh, those are pretty much all the notes that I've got um, immediately. Uh, before I go any farther, let's see if anybody else uh, wants to ask a question about what I've been talking about, or if Alan has got something that he would like me to bring up. This is KN4AQ, standing by for anybody, anybody with a question. 
Hey, in you. This is N4GB with a question. Hey, Ian, this is N4GB with a question. N4GEB, KN4AQ, go ahead with your question. Well, first off, good evening, and thank you for presenting all that material. Uh, very well organized, and I'm sure it's going to be a help uh, for all of us. One question I had was, using Al as an example here, uh, he was asking for check-ins. And I was to say, AB4OZ, this is in 4 GEB, Bob and Clayton. That would be how we normally have been doing it, but uh, the way I understand it, we should do it as follows. AB4OZ, this is in 4 GEB, Bob and Clayton. Uh, is that correct? Okay, Bob. Well, actually, both are correct. Um, I was given one version of how to do it and wasn't getting re real detailed about where to place the this is. Um, but you could do it either way. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Go ahead. All right. Very good. Yeah, the main you know, focus point there is to allow the carrier, if you will, to drop and listen. <laughs> That way it does uh, not completely eliminate, eliminate, but it definitely helps repeat and, you know, that sort of thing. Anyway, thanks again for all the good information. In 4 GEB, back to net control. Okay. And one way that you do it um, takes a little longer. One way it takes a little shorter. Uh, the, when, it, when you are basically doing something that formatted, to just give your call sign or your call sign and say this is, um, and everybody's doing that, it takes about the same amount of time. And there's a chance, pretty good chance, that if you're doing it that way and somebody else is doing it that way, that you both transmit at the same time and you both stop at the same time. And although you're stopping to see if you're doubling with anybody or anybody else is uh, also trying to check in, you'll never hear them. I, I have heard many times when both stations say, uh, AB4OZ, and they let go, and they come back on, this is KN4AQ, and they stop. And that means they've, they've done that sequentially at exactly the same time. It's certainly possible that that can happen. If you leave a little more pause um, in between your two transmissions, or you wait a little longer to start your check-in, uh, pretty good chance somebody else is going to be a little faster than you are, and, uh, and you'll hear them, and you just wait for it another chance. I usually just wait a long, long time. And before I think net control is going to give up, but when I'm pretty sure nobody else is, uh, is attempting to check in, that's when I'll come on. I don't mind being last in line. Anybody else have a question? KN4AQ, stand by. KN4AQ? This is KI4CFS Martin with a question. Hey, Martin. Been a while since I've talked to you. KI4CFS, KN4AQ, go ahead. Well, th the question is I've really taken a passion for uh, helping new hams get in now, coming back in the hobby, and the biggest thing I get is they put out their call sign and no one responds, and I just love your comments on it. I'm, I'm doing my best to listen for that and make sure I'm not the culprit of letting someone throw their call sign out and not responding. But I'd love your comments um, on that to encourage them and also to respond to soldiers' hams that might be available to actually answer when someone does it. Uh, back to net control. Thanks. Thanks, Martin. That is one of my favorite topics to uh, talk about. And um, back when I was uh, writing... Uh, FM column for CQ and uh, and writing for the Repeater Journal, I would cover that topic uh, fairly frequently. And um, the first thing that I say ab about that is that if what you want is to have somebody answer you and to have a conversation on the repeater, if all you do is mumble your call sign and say you're listening you haven't given people very much of an incentive to come back to you unless they're like Martin or sometimes like me who say, hmm, somebody said they're there. 
let's not leave them in the lurch. So if all I were to do were to say, okay, I'm probably listening. There's a pretty good chance nobody's going to come back. Make, you could try that once, see if anybody else is like an eager beaver and wants to, wants to talk to you. If nobody does, make a bigger production out of it. This is KN4AQ, Kilo November 4, Alpha Quebec. My name is Gary, and uh, be uh, interested in uh, chatting with somebody. If anybody else ever is around and wants to talk on the repeater with me for a few minutes, KN4AQ, stand by. And if that doesn't drag anybody out of the woodwork, there's a pretty good chance there's nobody in the woodwork to drag out. Uh, this is a technique that I use more often when I'm on the road than when I do uh, than I do when I'm local. Although if I'm local, um, I do try to make it at least clear that I'm there to talk. KN4AQ Mobile, listening on 6-4 if anybody's around. But when I'm on the road and I'm keying up a repeater that I'm not known on, you know, I'm not I'm foreign to, traveling through, then I do the the production number, KN4AQ, Kilo November 4, Alpha Quebec. My name is Gary. I'm from Raleigh, traveling through the territory. What if anybody's on the repeater that uh, has a few minutes to chat? Just keep me company here on the road. KN4AQ, standing by. KN4AQ, KO4CQR. <laughs> okay, well, actually, it was in the middle of my example, but I was pretty much at the end of my example, so... Uh, we can pick up the next question. KO4CQR, KN4AQ, go ahead. Good evening, sir. Hope your uh, drive is going good. Uh, I got a kind of a general question on uh, repeater lists. Um, you know, going through the different sites and the different repeater lists, uh, I, I see a, a lot of disparagement between uh, PL tones and that sort of thing. Is there any particular site that you would recommend? Uh, you know, because I'm just getting a lot of different things from different sites. <clears throat> um, I'm not exactly sure what you're asking. I, you're getting different information from different uh, repeater directories. Um, you know, maybe the R Finder and uh, um, Repeater Book, things like that. They're telling you different things. Is that the question? Okay, it's another one of my favorite topics, and it's not just the uh, the PL tones or the CTCSS or the subaudible tones. All those are all words for the same thing. Um, it's not just the tones; it's whether the repeaters are even on the air or not. Repeater directories are based on information supplied by repeater owners and uh, repeater uh, by the by the folks that put the repeaters on the air as they send that information to frequency coordinators and then the frequency coordinators typically send that on to the repeater directories. Now, some of the, the new online repeater directories, and by new I mean 10 years old or more, <laughs> been around for a little bit too long to call things new. Um, some of them take information directly from repeater users that are verified, that they know have uh, sent them good information in the past. But most of them uh, rely on information from frequency coordinators, repeater councils, um, or the repeater owners themselves. And there is the rub, because that information is not updated fast enough. It's not updated often enough. <clears throat> and sometimes it's not updated at all. <clears throat> In particular, if a repeater has been taken off the air and is Oh, maybe the person that owns it is expecting to get it back on the air, but they're having a lot more trouble than they than they thought they would. They've had equipment troubles. They've lost the tower site that the repeater was on. They will be reluctant to notify the frequency coordinators that that repeater is no longer on the air, and because uh, they're afraid that they will lose their frequency coordination and not be able to get it back should they one day be able to put the repeater back on the air. They are supposed to notify the frequency coordinator of any changes in the repeater, and whether that's location, power, uh, antenna configuration, subaudible tone, any of the parameters that get listed in the repeater directories, if they change something, they're supposed to 
notify the frequency coordinators who will then notify the publishers right away. But um, that that is not often honored. So what do you do about that as the repeater user? Well, you get the best information you can from the repeater directories and uh, see if uh, you can key up a repeater in an area where you expect to be able to. But don't be too surprised if you can't. Uh, it, I would say that uh, 25 to maybe 35% of the information in repeater directories is wrong. Um, and maybe 10 to 20% of that is the repeater's not even on the air at all. And the next uh, percentage is that they have the wrong tone listed. So you are kind of stuck uh, and uh, unable to access that repeater. If you hear activity on it and you can't get into it, then the chances are that it's using a different tone than what you have in your radio, a different tone than what might be listed. Most radios have some version of something called tone scan, and you can try that and see if your radio can lock onto the tone and uh, it can figure out what, uh, what the tone that they're using is. Not all radios have that. Not all radios implement it very well, but it's something that uh, would be worth understanding. Also, not all repeaters send their tone. They require it for receiving, but they may not send it. So there are some reasons why that a tone scan may never work at all on, a, on given repeaters, but it's the best you can do. Um, if, if it's a local repeater, something in the area, and you just find yourself never being able to get into it, well, then ask. Uh, ask people on other repeaters if they know what the tone is or what the deal is with the repeater that you're trying to get into, and uh, um, maybe somebody else uh, knows more than what's being listed. Uh, and uh, that's the best answer I got, but let me see if that uh, covered it for you. KN4AQ. Uh, that actually sounds about right. The 30 to 40 percent uh, is what I'm finding uh, across the board. You know, I, I don't have tone scan on anything, but I can certainly, you know, go up and down the, the range of tones manually. Uh, that's a that's about what I was thinking. I, I was really just curious as as to if there was like a place that you might go personally to uh, get the best information. But I understand. Uh, secondary question is how am I sounding uh, to you? I had gotten a new uh, speaker mic. And it didn't work so good, but I have done some work to it, and I'm wondering if it works any better. Uh, you sound fine to me. Um, audio level sounds good. The fidelity sounds good. Um, and uh, I'm not hearing any uh, crackling or popping or anything that would indicate that you have trouble. So whatever it is, it sounds like you fixed it. Comment. Uh, go ahead, comment. Thank you, Gary. KN4AQ. This is AB4Z. Um, two things about uh, speaker mics and about microphones in general. I just thought I'd throw it in at this point because he was asking. Uh, his microphone, his audio sounds fine, but it has a double ka chunk on it. It sounds like the mic is turning the mic off before it turns the radio off. So it's a chunk chunk. So it's a, a real. Uh, obvious sound that will, uh, so a lot of people will not be able to recognize you by that sound. But as, when it comes to microphones, I want to mention this, that uh, always know where your microphone is. Always know where your microphone is. Very often someone will let the microphone sit on the seat of the car or seat of the house or wherever. And especially in the seat of the car, it can fall between the cracks between the seat and it keys up the radio and you don't know it. You might not know it for weeks and the repeater will time out, and then we have to track it down and figure out how to turn it off. So always remi always hang your microphone up somewhere. Don't let it lie in the seat. Always know where it is. Always keep track of your microphones so you don't uh, time out the repeater. Also, this is a directed net. Gary is net control at the present time. He's giving a training lesson for those who have started late and don't know what's going on. 
Gary's giving training, having to do with repeaters, he's net control. All questions need to be uh, uh, directed to Gary, and he has to uh, ask the question and then acknowledge it. Don't just don't jump in and get in the way of someone else. Wait for Gary to ask for questions, uh, and he will do a lot more of that. AB4Z, back to net control. W4EW6 for Raleigh. Okay, Alan, uh, very good points. Thank you very much, um, which brings me to another question or another point. Uh, Alan was saying uh, be careful of where your microphone is when you're, uh, especially in your car, um, if you don't have a hang-up bracket. Hang-up bracket's a good idea, but if you don't have one and you normally just let the microphone sit on the seat, um, you can put something on it or it can sit, get wedged between the seats and uh, pretty easily get that uh, push-to-talk button pushed and sit there and transmit. And we have heard that over the years that I've been involved with the 6.4 repeater and other repeaters. We hear that uh, a couple times a year. And we're hearing the voice in the background. You know, somebody doesn't know that, that they've got their, micro, their, their, their microphone live, their transmitter is on. The repeater will transmit them out for the three minutes and then will drop off because of the timer. Uh, and they're still on. Um, for as long as their microphone button is wedged. Hopefully their radio's not in high power, because if it's in high power, they have a chance of burning out the final transistors uh, in their power amplifier. Uh, these radios are not designed for continuous transmit. They don't like to go for more than 10 minutes, maybe, maybe 15. That's kind of pushing it for the length of time these uh, um, mobile radios are supposed to be able to transmit. The repeater... You might wonder about the repeater. How can it be transmitting all the time? Well, it's designed uh, much more conservatively, has big heat sinks, um, pulls heat away from the final transistors, and the transistors are not operating anywhere near their peak capacity. So the repeater puts out about 40 watts, and it can do that 24 hours a day, all day long, all week long, if it has to. Uh, but your mobile radio is not designed to do that, so... Two reasons, two very good reasons to, to make sure that uh, you have control of that microphone when you're not uh, actually talking into it. And again, a hang-up bracket's a really good idea. So let me see if anybody else has a question. This is KN4AQ in the, uh, the New Ham Net version of uh, Allen's Tech and Trader Net. Uh, anybody else with a question? Go ahead. KN4AQ, this is K4BMW. K4 BMW, uh, Baker Mike Whiskey or Baker November Whiskey? Are you a famous car company? KN4 AQ, go ahead. This is Kilo 4 Bravo Mike Whiskey. No affiliation with the car company. <laughs> Almost sounds like you'd, you'd be a BMW employee who got a vanity, but go ahead with your question. Uh, it's more of just seeing uh, how well I hit the repeater from here. I just signed a lease on a house uh, up here in Hillsborough. Uh, you are doing well. Your signal is full quieting, and uh, audio is good, 100% uh, uh, good solid signal, which for Hillsborough is a little bit surprising because you are in the null of the antenna pattern of the repeater, We'll talk a little bit about more a little bit more about that in a moment now that you've reminded me to to bring it up but uh what kind of radio and uh, antenna are you running from Hillsboro to get into the Raleigh 64 that well I don't remember the exact model it is a uh, variant of Baofeng it's like B Tech it's a mobile it has uh four VFOs uh UHF VHF but it'll monitor the four uh, VFOs um, in a Toyota Tundra pickup truck with a mag mount on the roof. One of the, um, I forget the brand, it's the shorter UHF VHF with the uh, coiled up portion uh, of the antenna, but it's a short one. Okay, so you're running a full power mobile, which uh, sort of explains why you're doing as well as you are, but... Um uh, it's still uh, still pretty impressive. Um, again, the the repeater, this repeater is located on the uh, State Highway Patrol Tower, 
which is off Blue Ridge Road, right by uh, uh, Wade Avenue Extension by 440, um, the the west side of Raleigh, right, right across from the fairgrounds. Uh, the antenna is up at about 250 feet on that tower, and it is facing southeast. It's not a beam antenna. It's a four-bay um, uh, collinear-type antenna, uh, and all four bays of the uh, antenna are facing southeast, and uh, it's on the southeast leg of the tower. The, having the antenna facing all southeast gives it a little bit of gain in that direction, being on the southeast leg of this broad-faced tower puts a very deep null to the northwest, um, pretty much straight out I-40 toward, uh, uh, toward Durham. The reason for that is that we are co-channel with a 6-4 repeater in Winston-Salem. And um, when we were coordinated in around 2000 to move to this tower, well, when we were in a previous location, we used to have significant co-channel issues with um, the 6-4 repeater in Winston. We would hear their users, and they would hear us, and um, uh, especially during band openings. Um, it wouldn't take much of a band opening for our users to get over their repeater and for mostly for us to hear their users because uh, we had much wider coverage than they did. Their repeater is on a hospital over in Winston-Salem, and it's not up real high. Um, so when we, were, when we had to move this repeater in around 2000, and re-coordinate it, we were required to be on, on this location, on this tower, and concentrate our signal away from Winston-Salem. As soon as we did that, pretty much those problems disappeared for us, and uh, that repeater requires a tone that we don't require, so they may hear our mobile signals, but, well, our mobile signals may reach the repeater, but uh, but nobody hears them, so, because uh, we're not sending their tone. Their tone is, I think, 100 hertz. Um, so that's why the 6-4 repeater doesn't cover very well in RTP or in Durham. And uh, maybe Hillsboro's around the bend of the curve a little bit. Uh, but I'm actually kind of surprised that uh, we're getting over the, to Hillsboro quite that well. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a chance to respond and uh, sign out, and we'll move on to the next question. K4 BMW for the ID. Yeah, I, um, I actually kind of picked this place because... On a topo map, I'm in a region that is uh, 600 feet, I believe, maybe a little more than 600. And you guys were a little crackly at the house. I just went up the street here to a church parking lot with pretty good views in, uh, well, pretty open to the south, southeast and stuff. So hopefully that explains it. But I um, just moved up here from Cary, just moved here from Florida. I've been on the net a few times. Uh, I've been here about three months. So hopefully uh, we'll be doing a lot more talking. And um, this is rural enough. I think I can get a tower or some sort of uh, fiberglass poles or something up above treetop level and uh, participate more. K4 BMW. Listening. K4 BMW, KN4AQ. Well, thanks for your question and checking in, and uh, good luck with that location. Um, yeah, if you are uh, if you're a ham and you are relocating and you like operating VHF and UHF, uh, and you are looking for a place to uh, to live, uh, top of the hill is nice. <laughs> you're uh, you're halfway there in terms of good good coverage, and then getting antennas up on the roof will uh, will also help out a lot. Uh, anybody else have any questions about repeaters, repeater operating, uh, FM operating in general, even simplex? Uh, KN4AQ is standing by. Okay, Kilo November 4, Victor Tango Tango, up in Youngsville. Matt, KN4AQ, Gary and Kerry, go ahead with your question. W4EW64, Raleigh. Yes, thank you. Um, this is Matt. Um, been a ham for less than a year. I was just curious, I remember reading that VHF frequency or two meter frequency is affected by 
foliage, like, you know, we have the trees blooming now, or uh, the leaves coming out and all that, so we'll have foliage coming out. Can you just touch on that a little bit, how that might affect reception and transmission? Uh, I, I have a wire jay pull up in the tree, so just some things to look at. at. This is KN4 but VTT, back to net control. Okay, Matt, KN4 VTT, KN4 AQ. Notice we have the same uh, prefix, Kilo November. Um, mine is an advanced class call sign. I've got an extra class license, but an advanced class call sign. It was issued back in uh, 1989 uh, when I lived in Knoxville. And uh, it took this long for the uh, Kilo November prefix to reach the uh, technician and general class license uh, that uh, that you've got uh, well you got last year but it took uh, about what 20 years or so a little more than 20 years to uh, no 30 years <laughs> to uh, to cycle around uh, and reach the uh, the one by threes so I used to have a almost an exclusive on the kilo November there were very few of us because uh, there weren't that many advanced class around the area and then uh, now there's there's lots of you guys it's good to hear um, yeah, now I've got to remember what your question was. Hang on just a sec. Okay, so foliage and its effect on VHF and UHF. Uh, almost no effect, not no effect that you could notice on 2 meters. Um, a more significant effect on 70 centimeters. And as I understand it, and I don't know that I have a really good scientific handle on this, that it's going to be uh, wavelength related and that leaves on the trees are closer to the wavelength of 70 centimeters and it's uh, the moisture in them um, can affect the uh, uh, the propagation of a signal through the tree so if you uh, are uh, trying to operate through a, a, a repeater or uh, operate at a distance where you've got a, a lot of foliage in between you and the uh, the station that you're talking to um, then that can be that can have an effect but more on the 70 centimeter band than on the two meter band and there's one situation that I'm pretty familiar with that uh, I, I noticed this happening when I'm driving out US 64 uh, heading toward uh, Pittsburgh or toward Asheville and I'm going across Jordan Lake and I'm listening to the RARS UHF repeater. RARS got a, has a repeater on 444-525. Um, the repeater coverage down in the Jordan Lake area is not very good. It's mid-scale to maybe quarter scale as I'm driving along 64 uh, away from the lake by a you know, quarter mile, half mile in, in that territory. And then as soon as I pull out um, or travel, traveling on 64, across the causeway and the bridges so that I've got just the water from uh, Jordan Lake in between me and the repeater in, in its early takeoff angle. Uh, suddenly the repeater comes up to full scale and it's loud and clear. And then as soon as I pull back into the, the uh, wooded territory a little bit beyond, even though I'm gaining maybe 10 or 15 feet of altitude as 64 rises up off of the causeway, the signal drops down again. It's a pretty dramatic uh, um, demonstration of how the uh, foliage is interfering with the UHF signal trying to get to me uh, as I'm driving across that area. I don't see that same uh, effect on 2 meters and the 6.4 repeater, just on the uh, UHF repeater. But I'm going to point it over to Alan, who's more technical than I am, and see, Alan, if you have uh, anything to add to that. Uh, AB4OZ, KN4AQ, and the... New Ham, part of the TechNet and Trader set. W8WZ. KN4AQ. AB4OZ. Recognize Carl also. Um, I think you got it uh, pretty close. Uh, um, uh, I think moisture in the foliage is one thing. And uh, some people talk about uh, residents of uh, pine needles, but I'm not so sure about that. I think it's more the most moisture, like you were saying. Uh, um, I'm going to turn it over to Carl, and uh, you can turn it back to uh, Carl. Can turn it back to you. 
WHWZ, AB4OZ. Yeah, thanks, Alan. Uh, just, uh, uh, Tara just sent me a text, and Gary asked me to tell you that there is a question for you on the Facebook feed. <laughs> WHWZ, back to net control. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I'm going to have to look at that. Uh, I had it full screen, so let me see if I can uh, figure out what to do to make it. Uh, holy cow. <laughs> a question from Quebec, Canada. A bunch of other people are checking in. Well, that's cool. Um, let's see where the question is. There's a lot of people on there that were making comments that I was paying no attention to. Um, but I don't see the question yet. Not yet. And they're from all over the place, Canada. Uh, so I don't, yeah, I don't see a question. I might be, I might be missing it, but, uh, I don't see a question over there, but I'll try to, I'll try to keep, uh, keep an eye out on the, uh, on the Facebook, uh, group. Um, and a reminder that, um, we are uh, streaming this live to the RARS Facebook page, not the RARS Facebook group. Although if somebody wants to copy the URL from the page and uh, paste it over on the RARS group, we've got two places um, to uh, uh, meet with RARS on uh, Facebook, then uh, uh, it would be good if somebody could, uh, could do that. And so now a question has popped up about Echolink. An all-star from Matt Rhodes. And Matt, I'm assuming that you're not available here on the 6-4 repeater, so let me stop and see if you are, but uh, then I'll talk about Echo Link and All-Star for a second. Okay, this is KN4AQ. My name is Gary. I'm at the north side of Cary, so it's Gary and Cary. On the RAR's new ham net, an adjunct of the Tech and Traders net. Um, Okay, Martin, I see you there. Uh, I can talk more about Echolink than I can about All-Star. I only know a little bit about All-Star. Um, back in the 90s, as the Internet was starting to ramp up and, uh, and hams were beginning to play with it, they realized that they could use the Internet as a bridge between repeaters over great distances, uh, essentially worldwide distances. Why not? Um, connect the repeater audio to um, to an internet connection and then you need some way of making the connection out to the rest of the world and uh, and several of them were developed early on the two the first that were developed were one called IRLP the Internet Radio Linking Project and Echolink. Uh, IRLP only allowed repeaters to connect to the network individuals could not so it was purely an RF thing on your end, then the internet link to another repeater somewhere, and then RF back to the next person talking. Echolink had that capability. You could connect repeaters to it, but you could also get a, a program to run on your computer, and now these days on your phone, to let you connect directly to Echolink. When you register, you have to have a verified call sign. They won't let non-hams on the system, because once you are connected to Echolink, you can access repeaters by pushing a button on your keyboard or on your phone that will cause the repeater to transmit, and they want to make sure you have a license to be able to do that. So to join Echolink, you need to, to verify with your call sign uh, when you join, but then once you're on there, you can connect to other hams or to other repeaters, um, and there's thousands of them that are a part of Echolink. There's also thousands that are part of IRLP, and uh, there's several repeaters around the area that use both networks. I'm not super familiar with all of them that uh, are doing that these days. I know that the Carolina 440 uh, linking system has both an Echo Link and an IRLP connection, as well as RF linking to uh, repeaters um, around the triangle and beyond. So uh, let me reset the timer here. Um, so that's that's what you can do. I would, don't have nearly enough time in operating this net to tell you how specifically to do it. There's lots of tutorials. Echolink has got their own tutorials on how to 
operate their system, but basically you're on your phone or on your computer, you're going to download a, uh, an application, um, get yourself registered, and then there will be lists of available individuals to talk to and uh, repeaters to connect to. And once you've, you've made that connection to a repeater, then it's just like talking to uh, uh, any other repeater, except you at home are using, or on your phone, are using your own device. If you're if you're operating through a repeater that's got that connection, then you're just operating through a repeater. Uh, sometimes it can be hard to tell that someone is talking to you through an Echolink, an IRLP connection. Unless you're in Raleigh and they say they're in Albuquerque, then you can be pretty sure that they're coming in through an Internet linking connection of some kind. We don't have any RF connections that go that far. Um, Okay, John is saying something doesn't have echo link, uh, but I'm not sure which. I'm pretty sure uh, that the, at least it used to. It may not, may information may be old, but I'm pretty sure that the, uh, um, that the uh, 440 linking system still has echo link. But I, I could be wrong. That's it, something that they may have dropped out. One of the things about all of these uh, adjuncts and accessories that are on repeaters is that the people that Maintain the repeaters and keep them going can change them a lot. And you know, information, the way the repeater used to operate uh, can change, and unless you're keeping up with it, you can uh, find yourself with outdated information. Um, ah, Matt saying it's a very high-quality live stream. Well, Matt, it's coming through Google Fiber. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a gigabit of upload uh, bandwidth here to, to, uh, to handle. So... Um, uh, let me talk about All Star for a second. Uh, All Star is, if I say newer, it could still be 10 years old or more. Um, but it wasn't one of the first Internet linking systems to come online. Uh, it is um, it is basically another one of those systems that can uh, uh, link repeaters together. I don't know if individuals have a connection into All Star um, or not. I've never played with it, but re repeater operators certainly can use it, and it's basically just another network of linking that uh, is available for uh, for hams to connect um, uh, repeaters together over you know wider ranges than you could with uh, with using RF. Um, there are a few others, uh, and again, I'm not real up on the latest ones. I, I know that Echolink is probably the the biggest, but uh, about the only time I've ever heard All Star that I knew I was hearing All Star was when I was out in Hawaii and talking on a repeater on the Big Island um, that was sitting up at about 8,000 feet up on the side of uh, Mauna Loa, uh, and it was an All Star link, so I was hearing people from all over the country. Um, but uh, that's the only one I knew for sure was All Star. I think it may be a little more popular out west than it is uh, in uh here on the East Coast, but I I could have old information on that. There could be a lot of all-star repeaters around here. Anybody else have a, well, does anybody else have information about that that they want to stick in and correct me on? And then we'll go on for another question. Anybody have a an update or a correction? KN4AQ. Hey, Garrett. Go ahead, Alan. Um, what I might do is invite you to make a date with me uh, offline sometime and maybe get you back to talk about the differences and similarities between uh, DSAR, DSTAR, DMR, and uh, Fusion at a, at a future date. You're doing so well at this, they might want to come back and uh, listen to that some other time. So just keep that in the back of your mind and uh, we'll talk about it later on. ab 4 z back to net control. Okay, Alan, yeah, that is a pretty big topic and uh, probably worthy of uh, doing another net. You know, uh, I, I think it was um, um, KA9QJT, Brian, who was going to do a program at the RARS Fest, which was unfortunately canceled, along with just about everything else that goes on uh, uh, in the area because of the COVID-19 epidemic. Uh, I think he was going to give that talk at the RARS Fest. I think I saw that promoted Maybe he would be a good person to come on and, uh, and talk about that and make him use his radio again.
give me that call sign again. Uh, Kilo Alpha 9, Quebec, Juliet Tango. Uh, Brian. Thank you. AB4Z back to net control. Yeah, Brian does a lot of the public service uh, events, and I don't hear him on the air outside of the public service events. <laughs> but he, he is on just about every one of those. Uh, and I, again, I think it was him probably that was going to give the talk. It might have been just D-Star, which is kind of sad because D-Star has kind of disappeared from the triangle area. We have some DMR. I don't think we have any system fusion on the air. Um, and uh, the D-Star repeaters that have been around here have uh, have gone. Uh, I understand that there is somebody who is anticipating putting up another D-Star repeater. I've heard a little D-Star hotspot activity up on the far northeast side, um, up on uh, Capitol Boulevard heading out of town uh, one time. I think it was on 147.48. Someone was running a bit of a high spot hotspot on D-Star. But uh, we're a little bit of a digital desert around here. Even DMR, there's a DMR repeater up on the uh, the WRAL tower. It's up pretty high and has pretty good coverage, but it doesn't have an Internet connection. Uh, there is a repeater, two repeaters, in fact, in Cary that have an Internet connection and have uh, you know the out-of-town networking capabilities of a DMR. Um, the repeater's only 180 feet up, and uh, so not real wide coverage, but it covers across Raleigh pretty well, so... Those things are available. I guess we'll talk about them in another net. Let's see if anybody else has some more questions about FM and repeaters and operating procedures and uh, stuff like that. Uh, KN4AQ, standing by for questions. KN4AQ. This is KI4CFS with another question. Actually, a question about uh, repeaters. Ver <laughs> um, for Okay, Martin, we'll we'll make it your turn. Now that that uh, is something that Alan had mentioned to me about folks checking into nets, is when they check in, and they give a mini rag chew as part of their check in, which is not really good operating procedure. Um, I I invented a name for something like that. I called it a check chew, because it was half check in, half rag chew. But don't do that if you're checking into the formal nets. Uh, I used to run a net in the morning at 8 o'clock called the uh, Late to Work Net, and, and there we were very informal. I didn't mind people doing a check chew, but, but uh, not a good thing to do on a more formal net, the 6-4 net, most of the others around the area. But uh, it's your turn, uh, Martin. Go ahead. Well, the uh, North Carolina <clears throat> Amateur Radio <laughs> Operator Group, we've discussed it uh, on Facebook, and we're attempting to get greater wisdom on how we might be able to meet informally where pretty much all of North Carolina could get on. And the best idea I have now is exploring Echo Link and then also looking into the 440 system. But I welcome more of your advice on it. If you wanted to create a discussion <coughs> Uh, not a net, just a discussion, let's say, once a month, and not step on a net, uh, what would you recommend doing so people from eastern and uh, and uh, western North Carolina could get on it? Because we have almost about 300 members now, and um, love to hear your views. And they're listening, too. I've shared it in the group. The, uh, the grandfather clock on the repeater um, kind of took you out there, and uh, let, me, uh, let me have you repeat the last part of that question. Absolutely. We're, for the, the group I have, the umbrella group, North Carolina Amateur Radio, on Facebook, we're, we're exploring how could we have an informal gathering that everyone in the state could join that would be ham-related, and we're looking at possibly linking 440 with permission, uh, but also echo link seems the best candidate, and but we don't want to step on a current net, and we don't want to make it some type of overly formal thing like an informal conversation, and I just love your wisdom on that. And they are listening. I shared it in the group, and they're all giving, giving positive feedback. <laughs> Carl is saying 75 meters over on the... Uh Facebook uh, chat, um, 
And uh, he also loves the con- concept of a check chew. Uh, so hang on just a second. Speaking of stepping on other nets, Alan, um, is there another net tonight that uh, is going to use a repeater? Uh, no, listening that it's 9 o'clock, or does that happen on Sundays? Uh, go ahead, Alan. That's only on Sundays. You're clear. You can keep going. And just a reminder that I don't know if Martin missed the beginning of the net about the timeout timer. Martin, you have to slow down and let the repeater drop before you pick it up. If you're that fast on the trigger, you're, you run the risk of timing out. AB4OZ, back to net control. <coughs> Alan, you make an excellent kilocycle cop, KN4AQ. All right, so let's get to Martin's question. Um, it's a good question. Uh, there is not a, a uh, um, correspondingly good answer, unfortunately. Um, one thing about, well, first of all, it's going to have to be one of the Internet-related linking systems, and I, I saw that question come up. There is a, uh, a Facebook group for North Carolina hams, and there's one that you have you have started, I think, or somebody has started fairly recently for triangle area AMs. So if you're a Facebook user and um, enjoy uh, that as a method of uh, uh, communicating with hams, um, either well, regionally or you know around the state or around the local area, um, and you haven't discovered the North Carolina group or the triangle group, uh, look for both of those on Facebook. Um, the most wide coverage repeater network system that we've got in North Carolina is the Piedmont Coastal Repeater Network. <laughs> a cat tail in my face. The Batman has uh, decided to walk back and forth on the console. He'll probably switch my audio off any moment. Um, uh, the Piedmont Coastal Repeater Network has a couple of dozen repeaters. Okay, so the Batman is now switching cameras on me for those of you that are looking at Facebook. I get my no oh, Batman, no Batman. <laughs> the the Batman does not. He, he's he's got my remote control for uh, switching cameras, and uh, he doesn't want to let it go. Hang on a second. Ah. Okay, so the folks on uh, folks watching on Facebook are having more fun about this than uh, everybody else. Uh, watching me try to battle the Batman and uh, get him uh, off of the uh, console here. Um, there's the PCRN is the only group that has um, RF capabilities to large parts of the state. And even they don't have the entire state covered by uh, by a long shot. Um, and that is not a full time network. That's a, a dial up network. Uh, it's locally connected on the one forty six eighty eight repeater. Um, and uh, most of the major metro areas have a, a PCRN connection. Wilmington, for example, uh, Charlotte, the Triad area. A couple spots out in the mountains, and it extends a little bit into uh, Virginia and uh, uh, I think South Carolina. Um, that's not a an option for you guys because it would take a lot of work to bring up all those repeaters. It's, it's only been done a few times uh, for some uh, Aries-related activity that I've heard all the repeaters connected around the state all at one time, and frankly, it didn't work very well when that was done. So you are looking at some kind of a uh, an internet linking connection and um, Echolink is probably the, your best bet because everybody who wants to participate, even if there's not a repeater in their local area, can uh, can use it. There are uh, chat room capabilities on Echolink where multiple people can can gather. Um, I'm not very familiar with how th- they get organized or created. Uh, you can contact the uh, the administrators for Echolink and ask them if there is one that you can use, that you can borrow, or if uh, you can create your own and have that available, and then people can uh, connect to that. If they've got an Echolink-capable um, repeater, they uh, 
they can connect that repeater, they probably want to talk to the owners, the club, or the individual owners of the repeater to make sure it's okay to, to bring in net activity to uh, to that repeater through Echolink. And, it, um, well, one last question, or one last comment, but let me reset the timer here. <clears throat> um, it is difficult to tell what repeaters have Echolink connections. Uh, the repeater directories don't have good, accurate information about them. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, and um, the, your best bet for that is communicating locally with the owner of a repeater. So if somebody's in a in a uh, area of North Carolina that they think they want to join in on this activity and they'd like their, a, a local repeater to assist them in doing that so they can operate it in mobile or handy talkie or whatever and not have to rely on their phone, um, they'll need to talk to the local repeater owners to about that to find out whether there's Echolink and, uh, uh, and, and whether it would be okay to use it occasionally, you know, once a month for that activity. Um, and that brings up the point about local clubs and how well they uh, d uh, they disseminate information about their repeaters. It's all over the map. Now, RARS has pretty good information about the repeaters on the RARS website. Other repeater groups uh, and clubs, some have really good information about their repeaters and some have really terrible, outdated information about their repeaters. It, it, just like the repeater directories, it's all over the map, so you can't really tell. But if you got somebody in a far-flung area of North Carolina that would like to use Echolink, and that's the best one that I can think of, once again, because it's got that individual connection to it, then um, Echolink is probably the way to do that and uh, talk to the local repeater people to get it on a repeater, which is more fun than doing it on your uh, computer or your phone, because then you could just use uh, um, Skype or uh, um one of the other, uh, you know, Google Hangouts, and I'm, I'm trying to think of the, the other big one that, uh, uh, that a lot of people are using these days, and, the, and that name is suddenly escaping me. But, I mean, you certainly could do that, but I understand what you want to do is do it on the radio as much as you possibly can. And you can. Echolink is probably the best place, but you've got to get a lot of buy-in and cooperation on uh, doing that from repeaters all over the state. Uh, back to you, Martin, kn 4 aq W four E W. Or Raleigh. Thanks. Uh, I, in listening to your thought and the fact that we have a lot of very everything from first-time hams on, and some we have some that are only on Echolink. They don't even have a radio yet. They just got going. I really think what I'm going to do is a deeper dive into how can we start just on Echolink to minimize the complexity <laughs> and get that working, and then take some of the pathways you suggested after we successfully do it. We, we started with literally, uh, uh, we have, um, you had mentioned um, uh, uh, the, a Zoom meeting. We're having two of those just so we can see each other. <coughs> and uh, then, then our next is to have a discussion of how to find a place on Echolink. And I think that's the... Let us get on there first as a first tier move forward. Thank you so much. That was excellent. Appreciate it. Back to net control. Okay, Martin. This is KN4AQ and the New Ham Net from the Raleigh Amateur Radio Society on 6-4. A little spur from the uh, Allen's uh, Tech and Trader Net, typically on Saturday nights. Um, and good luck. Uh, I'll participate when uh, when you get that going. Like I want to join one of your Zoom conferences as well. I don't have any problem with uh, hams using the internet. Uh, some some hams, some old uh, curmudgeon hams. And if there was an old curmudgeon ham, I qualify because I've been a ham for 55 years. Um, uh, I should qualify for being an old cantankerous curmudgeon ham that says the internet that ain't real ham radio. But uh, but I don't. The internet is fine. Um, the one caveat that I put on using the internet is that you don't want to do it on any circuit that you are expecting to keep working, especially during emergencies and the type of emergencies we typically have here, which would be tornadoes and hurricanes. Um, those events can knock out power and communications across a wide region, 
And although it doesn't happen very often, they can also knock out uh, um, the Internet. Um, I enjoyed listening to uh, the, um, uh, the Hurricane Net, which had uh, an Echolink connection um, with the net control taking check-ins from Echolink. And as the hurricane progressed across the east or the west coast, progressively stations would just disappear because the hurricane would be knocking out the Internet in their areas, showing that it's not a really great way to, <laughs> to uh, rely on communications. And Internet-linked repeaters may seem great, but if they don't have an RF connection uh, on their linking to get out from their local area, then what you end up with is a local repeater if the Internet goes away. So um, that's what I think about that. It's a fun adjunct to ham radio. No problem using it. Just don't don't count on it in emergencies. Uh, somebody was asking on Facebook, and let me uh, reset my timer here. Somebody was asking on Facebook, um, Alan, um, Alan Covey, about uh, uh, hanging dipoles. He was watching the, uh, the dipole video that I put up as the uh, part of the Ham Radio Now program. Um, that I used to do, that uh, Jeff, AC4ZO, and I put a, a show out on how to build and hang dipoles. It, your, your question's a little bit too specific for this net because we're mostly talking about repeaters and, uh, um, and FM and things like that. But very briefly, uh, uh, I think you mentioned that you, you've already got a bow and arrow, and but you're having trouble getting height through the little limbs and backyard trees. I never really had that problem. Um, I use either a slingshot or Jeff's got a bow and arrow if uh, we're going higher than my slingshot or can reach or need a... The slingshot's near, not very good for a um, really well-aimed, specific, narrow uh, spot that you got to get through between two branches. Uh, I've got to get over a big branch that's just hanging out there in the middle of nowhere. My slingshot works okay, but if you want to fine-tune it and get you know, like the crook of a two big branches that are hard to otherwise get through, a uh, bow and arrow are better. Um, I don't really have any greater tips on doing that. Maybe a potato gun, the compressed air gun, um, might even give you greater uh, power and uh, accuracy. And if you want to see that, there's another Ham Radio Now episode from a RARS field day that uh, there was a, the uh, potato gun uh, contest. It's kind of fun to watch can't tell you exactly what to look for um, as far as an episode is concerned. But, so do some searching. <laughs> and let's see if anybody else on the radio has got uh, got another question. This is Gary, KN4AQ, on the north side of Cary with the RARS 2-meter, uh, well, new ham net, tech net, trader net. Anybody got a question, go ahead. Hey, before is it? Okay, Alan, go ahead. Okay, I just want to pull us back on subject for a minute and make just a couple of comments that you can follow up on and then go back to uh, the little broadbander part of it. I, it's okay to do that. I just want to pull us back on subject for a little bit. First of all, I want to thank Gary for uh, fixing the clock on the repeater. Uh, I tried to fix it and uh, couldn't do it, but Gary's got better, more experience, and he got it fixed tonight. So I appreciate that, Gary. And uh, move down the list, I got a little list here. One thing is that a lot of the uh, radios, especially the Bofangs, and uh, some of those uh, cheaper radios, uh, they, they come with a courtesy tone. They little, uh, uh, it, it's kind of a CB has a name for it, I can't remember. But try and turn that off for this repeater. We don't like that. Uh, it, it, it interferes with our tone, and it also uh, kind of wakes people up and scares them out of bed sometimes. So try to make sure that's turned off for this repeater. Second, when you're checking into the net, the net controls always say call sign, then name. There's a re reason for that. The reason is that when we're writing, when you reverse it, it gets us confused. Us, uh, us being net control operators are very limited to how much we can do at one time, and sometimes just writing in the backwards makes it real tricky. So it's call sign and then name. Call sign and then name so we get it right on the paper. It makes it easier for us to be, uh, please. And the last thing is, when you finish talking and turn it back to net control, please give your call sign. We want to keep it legal. You just to give your call sign uh, uh, when you finish, and if all of a sudden the net goes away and you haven't done that, you're being illegal. So always give your call sign when you finish and turn it back. Uh, that's my comments, and uh, Gary, you can uh, 
uh, comment on that and then uh, pick up the other questions if you'd like. That's fine. AB4Z, back to net control. Okay, Alan, and I just noticed that there are, uh, oops, forgot to push my button that takes the hum out of here. Um, if you're listening on the Facebook, I just noticed there's 72 people watching live on uh, on the RARS Facebook page. 72 people. I don't get that, that many on my shows, even when I did the Ham Radio Now show. I uh, didn't get that many people watching, so um, awesome. We've attracted quite an audience. Probably more people are on Facebook than are uh, listening on the repeater right now. Um, I, let's see. Did, did you have a question I was supposed to answer, Alan? I've already forgotten. That's okay. I was just making a comment. You can pick up more comments now. A B four O Z. Back to net control. Okay. Let's see if anybody else has a question uh, for the RARS New Ham Net on uh, on the radio or on Facebook. K N four A Q. Standing by. K N four A Q. This is John, KG4AKB, with a comment. Mr. Satellite. Hello, John. Go ahead. Hey, Gary. I just, um, speaking of Facebook, um, I'm not sure if this is why, but I did share your live feed on two or three large Facebook groups, like Ham Radio 2.0 and Amateur Radio, that have, like, tens of thousands of people. I did see uh, at least one person from outside of the state commenting. So for anybody that's tuned in from one of those Facebook groups, I also posted on the Reddit, subreddit. Uh, thanks for tuning in. This is John, kg 4 W 4 ew 6 4 Raleigh. Okay, John. Yeah, yeah apparently you, uh, you did well. We've got folks from all over the place. There's somebody, uh, Rock from Australia, uh, Bill... KC2, KWT from Buffalo. Um, so, the, I mean, the RARS repeater has never had such a wide coverage. So thanks for <laughs> thanks for doing that, I think. Anybody else have a question for the RARS uh, New Ham Net, KN4AQ? Okay, yep, Chris Forsland has found us from a Ham Radio 2.0. Um, okay, well, Alan, it sounds like we are running low on uh, questions out there. Uh, as far as the Facebook thing is concerned, um, that will stay up. So if you missed the beginning of the net and you want to go back and, uh, and listen from the, from the start, we started at about 8 o'clock, so about an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, you got a, a, uh, a history of the, uh, of the event uh, recorded for posterity over on Facebook. And, Alan, is there anything else that you uh, – you would like to add to get covered before we uh, wrap things up, and you can. Do you want? Are you going to do a uh, a tech and traders version, or this be it? Uh, over to Alan K and Frank Q. K and Frank Q A B four Z. I will do a short version um, uh, when you turn it back to me. So uh, uh, when you're done, just make sure everyone's done, and uh, no more questions on Facebook, and I'll uh, pick it up after you finish. A B four Z. Back to Nick. Okay, very good. There, there is also a, a New Ham Facebook group that I uh, watch and uh, add comments to when um, I think I've got something valuable to add. Uh, my wheelhouse is uh, medium broad, uh, but it does, certainly doesn't cover all of ham radio. Um, just you know, in the in the 55 years I've been playing, I've covered, I've, I've caught a little bit about a lot of things and a lot about a few things, and FM and repeaters is one of those areas where I've you know, kind of focused my expertise, but uh, I have a little bit of experience doing a lot of other things. So um, if, you're, uh, if you're a new ham and uh, um, want more resources, of course, you can ask questions on the RARS Facebook group. Local folks will, uh, will help you out. Um, you can find the new ham Facebook group. Um, I mean, there's really just way too many opportunities for doing things. You got kind of got to narrow them down. So I, I would, uh, you know, talk about the RARS group for uh, local stuff, and then the the New Ham group uh, or Ham Radio 2.0 is a lot of Q and A goes on over there as well. That's my friend uh, Jason that uh, that runs that uh, podcast, YouTube show, and uh, and Facebook group, Ham Radio 2.0. 
So uh, that will be it for me. I'll turn it back to Alan. He can do some uh, TechNet TraderNet stuff, and uh, maybe we'll uh, we'll do the digital. Uh, well, like I say, we want to get Brian to do the digital stuff. But uh, Alan, you can uh, twist my arm to come do this again uh, sometime in the medium distant future. In the meantime, everybody, uh, stay home, wash your hands, be careful, and you will not be seeing me out on the streets for uh, for a good long while. Uh, back to Alan, KN4AQ, over and out. Thank you very much, Gary. You did a great job. Yeah, the net, this is KO4BEE for the the new uh, members. Uh, this is direct net. Everything needs to be directed to the net control. This is the net control. Thank you, Gary, for uh, everything you did. Uh, great, uh, great net. And uh, unfortunately, we need to get some of these people to go back to the beginning and watch the whole thing so they know what's going on. Uh, appreciate that. Love to call you back again. And again, thanks for straightening out the clock for us. This is AB4Z, Raleigh Amateur Radio Society, two meter tech net traders net. Um, right now, I like uh, one announcement that we're going to have the, um, the uh, Taco Thursday net. We'll start next week. Uh, since we can't go to Taco Thursday, we're going to do it here on uh, 6-4. That will be at 1130, uh, Taco Thursday net. Uh, call in and, uh, and uh, say hi. Um, my request is no medical information on the nets. Hopefully all the nets, but at least my nets. No medical information. I don't want to know anything about any viruses or anything that's going on out there. If you want to know, go to your own Facebook page or to a uh, news site. Don't bring it to the nets. And um, right now, uh, we're not going to do a rag show because the net ran uh, very nice, very long. What I'm going to do is ask if there's anyone who has any technical questions for the net. Call AB4OZ. Give your call sign followed by your name. All right, nothing heard. It sounds like we wrapped it up. Any last comments before we close it down? Call AB4OZ. AB4OZ. This is KI4CFS, Martin. Uh, go ahead, Martin. I just have to say that was outstanding, and I was just about going to ask you tonight if I could interview you to do what Gary did, and it was, it was excellent. I am... Uh, both interest in uh, learning the rules, and I'm also quite artful in uh, forgetting them from time <laughs> frequently. So that was fantastic. Thanks so much uh, for having this, taking this time right now, because a lot of us are home. Back to Net Control, KI4 CFS. Okay, Martin. KI4 CFS. A before Z. Martin, you're letting go of the, the microphone before you finish, and we're losing the S. Keep that in mind. Uh, also, one of the problems that Virginia and I run into very, very often is when we wanted to uh, try and help people and uh, get problems corrected, a lot of times the people that need the help don't stick around or don't check in or they check in and out and don't hear what's going on. So try and get people to uh, watch Gary's, uh, uh, the beginning of this on Facebook to find out about the net uh, check-ins and things like that. So uh, spread the word on that so they can see it there. Any last comments before we close it down? Call AB4OZ. AB4OZ. This is Kilo Juliet 4, Delta November Charlie, Paul and Carey. That recognizes KJ4DNC. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, Alan, I just wanted to give a big uh, thank you to uh, you and to... Uh, Gary, for all the hard work you guys did in tonight, I got a chance to watch most of the stream. It was really well done. Thank you for all your support for our club and our community. Appreciate it. KJ4DNC clear. Thank you, Paul. KJ4DNC, AB4OZ. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for uh, stopping by. And uh, uh, you have a nice uh, weekend and a safe weekend. Any other comments before we close it down? Call AB4OZ. Okay, thanks for checking in, everyone, and uh, uh, staying around, and um, uh, we'll try and do this again sometime in the future. Uh, Gary is the uh, a great um, library of information. We'll try and get him back again. 
AB4Z returning W4DW repeat back to all my Jews. AB4OZ clear.